Welcome to the manufacturing stage, where we have gathered some of the brightest minds in life sciences and process industry to share their insights and expertise with all of you. Sebastian Böse from Back of Automation, Michael Börling and Oliver Frieker from Citiva, supported by my colleagues Bernard Korten, Giuseppe Menin, Alessandro Mariani and Herbert Oberauer, will show us in the first scene at this stage how all about MTP and how this fascinating technology acts as an enabler for open and process model automation. Now, without further ado, it is with great pleasure that I invite the first speaker to the stage, Bernard Korten, Director, Industry Management, Life Sciences Industries at Copadata Headquarters. <laughs> Integrating an industrial equipment and controlling it immediately by just doing some mouse clicks. Do you think this is still science fiction? My name is Bernhard from Kuperata. Welcome to this session about uh, MTP as an enabler for open and modular process automation. We've prepared a really cool lineup for, that, for this session, so let us have a look together what we have prepared for you. We will start the journey with myself, I will give you an update on MTP, the standard a little bit. Standard is in progress, the standard is moving, is evolving. What is coming next with Xenon? But we don't just have slides prepared for you. We want to show you some real thing. We want to show you a live demonstration. How easy it could be to integrate an industrial equipment by the use of MTP together with Citiva. Then we move on our journey in the direction a little bit, process automation and uh, DCS systems, how you could use legacy PLCs, also with Xenon, using function blocks, smart objects, but also the Xenon logic and create easily a PNID with DCS functionality. After that, we move on our journey with uh, Beckhoff showing us the seamless engineering from creating a PNID scheme out of DEXB and how this is moving then into a real poll project and how does it look in the end. And after that, last but not least, we will show you what is our vision in the future if you combine a DCS system, let's call it an open DCS, with MTP. So think about it. If you orchestrate your DCS, your PNID, what does it mean for you? All right, so let's jump into the first session, MTP, today. I will give you an update what you can expect also with the next version of Xenon. But let me start now a little bit with the standard itself. The ones who are working and are familiar with the standard, they know that this standard consists of different parts. It looks like this. It is not just one part. It is different parts, and the standard, yes, is still in progress. But what we also see here on the left column, that some core components are released. So the core components that you can start with your plug and produce by the use of MTP is already there. It's finished. You can use MTP already. And as we have heard today by Dr. Bamberg, successfully MTP is already out there in use. You also see that there is other parts not ready, so it's still in progress. Basically, the standards, they're working on it, I think it's till uh, 2015, and we also at Copadata had the first touch points with MTP in 2015, 2016. So a lot have moved till then. So what can you expect now in the next version of Xenon. You see there is a lot different parts. There is a lot different versions also of these parts. So there is a new version of part one. There is a new version of part four. And we decided to support part one, two, up to part 5.1 with the next version of Xenon. It's, it's version 12. We also have included part five and part 5.1. It's still in draft. As you can see here, it's not finally released, but it has the status to be released soon, as far as we know it from the working groups. Now, you might ask yourself, what about the rest? So what about with uh, alarming 
what about with uh, events? The good thing is that from the first line of code, Xenon was built as an open and modular system that fits very well to a standard like MTP, which is a modular standard for plug and produce. So in Xenon, don't worry, you can start already now with MTP projects. There is modules in Xenon coming out of the box. Xenon is a GAM5 software category 4. So you can use also the audit trail functionality. You can use the full comprehensive alarming, which is already in Xenon since years. So you can start now thinking about where you could use the standard MTP, where it makes sense in your factory, which equipment you might use to easily integrate and control it, easily orchestrate it. Cooper Data, we are monitoring the standard closely. We are working also together in the working groups. And if there is a final status available of different versions of next versions of parts, of course, we will also include them in our product. But now, let's have a look what comes next. Also in Xenon, we did a lot to support further the MTP standard to make your lives easier. Your lives easier as an end user, your lives easier as equipment manufacturer. So let me start with the parts. You have seen already, it's a lot different parts, each part covering a different topic of the standard. So we've integrated now part one to part 5.1. And if you don't know it already, we also have a validation tool. So you can validate what parts are in an MTP file of the different versions, and you can get uh, a report of the quality of your MTP file. And now you might think of there is a lot different versions, there's different parts with different version numbers. How can I manage it? So I get a, a version number one of this manufacturer, I get the version number 1.1 of this manufacturer. So how can we manage to read all those versions? For that reason, we thought about building a compatibility layer in our MTP studio. So for us, or for you now, it doesn't matter what version you get of an MTP file. It could be part one to part four, five and five one, and each version which is included, and it could be even mixed, will be shown in the system, like you see here in the screenshot. And then you can choose, do you want to upgrade it to the newest version of the standard, or even vice versa, so you also can decide to downgrade. Probably you have the, new, the need also for this one, for this direction. And in the report, you get informed what you also have to change in your logic component for that. Also, the template project has evolved. You know, Xenon, we need a template project, which brings the basic navigation. There is all the faceplates inc included. There is all the objects included you need for orchestration, for the orchestration of uh, a P and ID picture, for orchestrating your process. So there is now a language change included for easy internationalization. There is a skin possibility for light, dark. You can customize your template with different colors, with your own logo, and so on. There is an apply mechanism, which was in the standard. Uh, in the new version of the standard coming. This is supported. You can uh, do a service operator interaction and so on. But also, reporting is now available. So most relevant data of your executed batches are now available via report. Last but not least, let me focus on um, one important topic, which is the use of legacy equipment. So you do have equipment already, but you don't want to throw it away, right? Just because of MTP. It is still working. So how can we support you with this? The solution here is the MTP gateway. The MTP gateway, think about, think of an adapter. You put this adapter on top, you leave your equipment as it is. The equipment can be intelligent equipment, so you have your own development PC code your own software, probably, developed since the, late, the last 30 years. You don't want to throw it away. Put on top a gateway, including all the MTP logic, the MTP status model, the OPC UA, uh, uh, tag structure, and so on. You even could use a skit with just IOs on it, and the MTP gateway provides you the logic to make this device intelligent, and you can orchestrate it then via MTP. This leads me to the next point of our presentation, we also have used the MTP gateway 
to integrate easily an industrial equipment. So it's a pleasure for me to hand over and to welcome Saitiva on stage, Michael Berling and Olivier Fricker. Let's give a, a round of warm applause. Thank you. Hey, Michael. So, hi, my name is Michael Björling. I'm working for Saitiva as an automation engineer. I've been there for almost 20 years now. So, and I come from Uppsala, Sweden, far up in the north. That's where we produce and make our skids for pharmaceutical industry, the downstream skids. Uh, we have made the new system. It's this one, the black box right now. So I will open this one. It's a newly released machine to the market. It's a single use. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it's called Ecta Ready 450. It's a small skid for use for single use equipment. Uh, that's to be smarter in the production, together with this smarter world, the blue, what you call Dr. Bamberg, the blue manufacturing site, the blue, blue green field, or oh, blue fields. Uh, this is totally new, and uh, so to say, we heard requests from customers the last couple of years, how to be smarter, use the ballroom concept, plug and produce. And, so to say, how can we help customers being smarter, getting quicker to market? And then why we, we were asked, can we use MTP? We saw this as an option to be smarter. So this is the totally new released machine since a couple of months, and we thought, why don't we try use MTP? So we partnered up with Coupa Data to make a proof of concept. How can we integrate this with MTP? to an overarching system very easily. And maybe you know integrating a machine can take months, maybe years, to a site. With MTPBC, this can be done actually in minutes, hours, maybe day, but it's extremely quick. So I'm not gonna focus much talking on that, I'm just gonna tell some few more things about this machine. It's called Ecto 450, it's a chromatography machine. It's for protein separation and it's used for small-scale manufacturing, GMP manufacturing. And as I said, it's used as single-use equipment. And you see the flow kit is made of these plastic tubings. And all these plastic parts, you use them for one batch, for one campaign, then you throw them away. Then you just install a new flow kit, takes about 10 minutes, and you're ready to reuse it then, again. You don't need to clean the system, validate it, blah, blah, blah. It can take days, up to weeks, before you get the final result from QA. So you're ready to produce within an hour again, maybe. Uh, you see on the bottom and on the screen here, from the left to right, on the, on the bottom, on the left side, you have all the inlets, it's hoses. You connect them to different buffers, products, whatever. And see then the part here, it's the pumps, exchangeable pump heads. Further up, you have an air trap, filter, etc. And on the top, we have the outlets. And in between, we have different instruments detecting pH, conductivity, UV, temperature, whatever. And as MTP is stating, the machine shall be self containing. And we have our own control system called Unicorn. This machine can act totally independent if we want, and then. If you want to hook it up to the next level, we use MTP. And for that, I have my colleague here, Olivier, that talk about what the unicorn is. So, please. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Olivier Fricker. Uh, I'm the global product manager for Unicorn, which is the um, uh, the control software for Cytiva. And I'm just going to introduce you to, uh, to Unicorn briefly. So, as you can see at the top over there, uh, the first version was released in 92, 1992. So we have 30 years of experience in uh, digital control, uh, computerized com control and uh, data acquisition. Of course, the code is not 30 years old, right? 
with, with Unicorn 6, we uh, made a new, complete uh, rehaul of the, of the whole thing. But we have a lot of experience there. And today, Unicorn controls more than 20 uh, different systems, not counting all the configurations available in, in uh, some of those systems. Okay. We cover a lot of ground um, in, in many dim dimensions. Uh, you know, we cover, for instance, different scales, from very small scale, lab scale, to uh, large scale manufacturing. We cover different, uh, all the phases of a drug uh, uh, development uh, and, and production. So, from drug discovery, to process development, to um, uh, scale up, and to large scale manufacturing. We cover different techniques. In uh, 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 upstream, we cover by we have bioreactors, we have uh, oligonucleotide synthesis systems. In downstream, we have chromatography, we have uh, filter uh, uh, filtration machines. Uh, we cover different modes, like standard uh, batch uh, uh, processing, but we have also uh, continuous processing. We have parallel processing. Um, yeah, so, so and, and then, of course, it, it's an ecosystem, so to speak. I mean, we have uh, tools that go with it, you know. So, uh, lots of, uh, it's, it's really central for us, Unicorn. I, I told you it's a control, uh, at, at its heart, it's a control software, okay? Here you can see a screenshot of uh, the system control module where the operators, you know, interact with the machine. They can do lots of stuff, uh, control uh, the, the system. They can run a recipe, as we call it in Unicorn, a method. They can interact manually. Uh, they can mix that together, manual and, and automated control. Uh, they can chain uh, multiple recipes or multiple methods. Uh, they can even uh, get interactions between two different systems. So there's, there's a lot they can do. But Unicorn is actually a little more than a system control. It's an integrated software. It's got everything that you need to, to, to do. So there's an administration module where you can administrate users, systems, you know, with the access control, the, the networks, uh, who can access what system and in what conditions, etc. All the audit trails are there. Uh, there is a method editor, which uh, is a, a really, a, a, a really one of the selling points of Unicorn because uh, you can train a guy who, who doesn't know Unicorn in two days and he can create a recipe for Unicorn. And two more days and you have a, a, an expert, okay? So it's very intuitive for, for the end user. And we have an analysis module or evaluation module where you can do all the reporting uh, and you can do uh, advanced analysis, you know, and you can, you know, process the data, do uh, crazy stuff. Again, it's used in drug discovery and, and process development. So we have those integrated tools like uh, design of experiment and all these things. So some core value. I, I told you Unicorn is, is a platform, okay, which is very good for, uh, you know, resource management. You can have guys working in, in lab scale in drug discovery, and then you can move them to a process development or manufacturing. It's the same platform. It's, it's very easy to manage resources. Um, but what we put really, uh, you know, uh, what, what is important for us is that Unicorn talks the same language as the end user. So someone who's uh, experienced in chromatography sees and understands quickly what what the system does and, and how it works. Same for filtration, same for bioreactors, okay? Also, <clears throat> we put a great pride in, in, um, in co-developing the software, the hardware, and the chemistry, okay? We, <clears throat> we happen to sell uh, uh, um, chromatography uh, uh, media, and we make sure that when 
when you use Unicorn, all this is integrated, all the know-how that we have that started, by the way, our company started in the 50s with uh, chromatography media. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, of know-how in-house, so we make sure that this translates into the software. And we always work on the, uh, you know, intuitive interface. It, it should be easy. People shouldn't have to, to bother about technology. I mean, they should have bother about the application, basically. Okay. And with this, I will leave the stage to uh, Herbert. Thank you. Thank you. Can we switch, please? Ah, uh, great. So, what you can see here now is an auto generated project uh, from our MTP suite. So in this case, uh, we have here two steerers uh, and one buffer. And we are in a production area, and we have a problem. Because we have to execute one last batch. But we also got this new uh, fancy device from Sativa, and we want to play around with it. So what we should do first? So maybe we, should, uh, we, do, we do some voting, or we do it at the same time. So. We are executing a batch recipe. We are uh, producing goods. And in the meantime, while this batch is running, we are importing uh, the definition of this device and orchestrating and dynamically add this device to our production area. So we have here the MTP Studio, as you can see. And also mentioned by uh, Bernard, it's got some facelifting and also some new cool features from the MTP Studio uh, side and also from the template side. So we just now use the batch control where we have prepared um, a master recipe like this. And this is an ESA 88 batch recipe uh, where you can see the faces. And the faces are the same like the services in the NTP world. So while the batch uh, control system, you are controlling the services of MTP together with parameters and so on. So, but we don't uh, want to execute mass recipes. We want to uh, execute control recipes. For this, we have to release this mass recipe. We go over here. And now we have uh, here the possibility via the so-called quick start to uh, fast, uh, uh, fastly, uh, simply creating a control recipe and also then executing it. We select this master recipe. We say a new control recipe. Name is fine. Go next. We reload it. We get a summary. This is our job ID. With this master recipe, the control recipe is the name. That is the same. And we execute it. We have to prior check if all services, all involved services, has, uh, have the correct state, meaning automatic external. It's OK for us. And we start it. So for both uh, steerers, now our cleaning is done, and so on, and so on. This is nothing new. We know how it works. So in the meantime, we have here the MTP Studio with all its different tasks. Uh, we have here the possibility to manage our uh, smart op uh, our MTP files, meaning together with this machine, they also delivered us an uh, MTP file, the definition for this device. And what we do now here is just selecting this file and say import. What is now done in the background? So based on the information of this MTP file, it's uh, a very complex uh, XML file, but uh, the customer don't have to worry about this. So we are reading out the content. We know then which signals this device has. We know which uh, process screen this device has. And out of this, we are then creating a so-called smart object template, which is a kind of package 
of Xenon objects, meaning it contains then variables, screens, frames, functions, symbols, and whatever to represent this device. So the import uh, uh, is ready, so it was done. This is an action you only do once. You get this device and you import it. Then it's stored in the central database. Everybody can uh, use this. In the next step, we have to say, uh, we have to define how many devices I do have. Because in MTP it's like this, it's just a definition of this device, of this type. And I can have five of the same type. So it, it does not make sense then to import five times the MTP file. I just import it once and make five instances out of it. And we do it like this. We select the definition and doing some addressing. In this case, we are setting the OPC UI namespace index. And that it was. So this is also an action you only do once, meaning uh, your physical, uh, to define your physical devices in your production area or in your laboratory once. And now you are at the stage to do modular production, meaning you have here the possibility to create different kind of configuration of your system. You can uh, create it, you can save it, you can uh, uh, then um, generate it again in the, uh, later on, you can modify it and whatever. So we are opening this one, we make it big, and we see here uh, this is the configuration which was currently running now with this, with this two steerer and the buffer. We now have here also the Sativa device available here. We just drag and drop it here. And now we are connecting them. This connection here just represents the physical connection. So from the buffer, there is a pipe, a tube, or whatever connected uh, to this device. Uh, here we also would have the possibility to logically uh, logically connect them, meaning we can forward signals from one autonomous device to another one. Because the steerer itself doesn't know that uh, behind this one is a buffer or a, 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 a separate steerer. In the HMI view, this is then what you get at, uh, on the generated project for, for controlling. So we have here this device, and we want to have this piping a little bit different, so we make some edges. So we, doesn't, we don't make it nice now. I don't have the time. And it's also like this, what you see is what you get. So <laughs> this you will get also afterwards. That's just like this. <laughs> so we save it. And now we are generating the PL project. We are confirming, and now in the background, uh, the loaded pr uh, template project in the Xenon engineering studio is updated. In the meantime, we can see uh, our batches uh, has finished. It's finished, and this dialog you see here, this is a so-called service operator interaction, which is uh, available since uh, with the new Xenon 12 version. Um, there, uh, it's defined in the MTB standard that uh, a service, when it's active, has the possibility to ask questions to the operator at any time when it's active. So uh, you can use it like this, that, for example, at the end, the operator is asked, how was the uh, output? Are you satisfied or not? And with the feedback you're giving back to the machine itself, yeah, it can make fine adjustment, auto-correction of parameters for the next run, okay? So how was the result? Uh, so, so it's like this, that every service can have as a, a given set on questions, and for each question, uh, you have a set of answer. And here, you then have the possibility to select your answer of choice. Of course, the result was perfect, so it's like this. We also see now that in the meantime, this one has finished. Uh, due to the lack of time, I will not show now everything. 
So for the, we close it like this. For the audit trail, for the executed batch, everything is in the audit trail. We have here the trending feature where you can see all the, the states of the different services. We have here also um, trending uh, trend screens for curves, for which is er everything is uh, auto generated and also reports based on the uh, executed control recipes. I will uh, do it very quick because of the lack of time. And you can see a nice graphic of the executed PFC recipe, all parameters involved uh, at the recipe, and also all events and so within this uh, report. So, as I mentioned before, the generation was finished. So the project was updated in the Xenon Engineering Studio. The only thing which, uh, which we are doing now in the engineering studio is this. We will create the changed runtime files. Only this. It's finished. And now we have to load these changes. We can close it like this. We load the changes now here. And voila. <laughs> this is how you fastly can uh, implement a device via the uh, MTP technology. So we have everything shown here. We have already connected to the system here. As uh, mentioned by Michael uh, and also by Olivier, it's, uh, we have used here uh, the MTP gateway. So their uh, system uh, is uh, still operated by the, uh, uh, by the Unicorn software, but all signals are exposed to their OPC UA server. And in the middle, there's our MTP gateway connecting to the OPC UA server of uh, Cytiva, then translating these signals with, uh, with some magic to the MTP world and exposing those to the uh, OPC OA server of Xenon logic. This means for a pole system like uh, Xenon, it's totally transparent. If this is um, a natively speaking uh, MTP device or if it's uh, connected via our MTP gateway. So we have here then the possibility, of course, to uh, execute the services and so on. We can also to have the possibility to manually control the devices here, opening waves or so. But this time we will we'll do it a little bit different. So, because the MTP standard defines different modes for services. You have uh, offline, you have operator, and you have automatic mode. And for the automatic mode, it's like this. Uh, they distinguish between automatic external and internal. External means it's, uh, the automatic mode is executed by the poll system, meaning via batch recipe. And automatic internal means that the device itself has an automatic mode. So as we, mentioned, uh, we uh, saw before, Cytiva has this um, uh, unicorn software where you can define your methods, your sequence of commands. And this is what we are doing now, that we start here a predefined method, and we will see. It's getting loaded. That we also get this the same state of the Cytiva method also on uh, on the poll side. We can then, of course, control this one, making uh, um, switching to pause mode, to continue, also uh, or also the hold mode, and so on. And as you can see, all the graphs uh, displayed here are values from the flow sensor, from the pressure sensor, pH, missong, uh, um, I don't know. Um, and uh, these are also the values which we have here. And those values are also then archived uh, on the pole side. So that is 
how you can fastly integrate an uh, MTP device into a pulse system. That's all I wanted to show you about uh, the MTP live demo. Um, I'm convinced that the MTP technology will play, uh, play an important role in the future. Uh, and uh, I'm also very uh, convinced that this will not be limited to the pharma sector only. And uh, I think it will be like this, that this will be the common language that automation devices speak to each other, like we are speaking now in English because we, have, uh, we are from different nations and have different uh, mother languages. We speak now in English and MTP will be probably the uh, common language between automation devices. And uh, it will, of course, help to faster integrate systems and it will also change how the modular production uh, will look like in the future. So I think the future is MTP. So now it's a pleasure for me to announce my colleague Alessandro Mariano, Mariani, and he will give you some cool insights into DCS topic. Please give him a warm applause. Hi everyone, a nice uh, warm welcome uh, from all of you, from the people that are present here, people are online, connected. I'm Mariano Alessandro, I work in life sciences and process industry for Copa Data Headquarter. Now you are seeing a glimpse of the future of new smart and dark technology. Now I take you to the dark side of all the legacy and uh, all the equipment that they are working until now. We start with a little history only to introduce you. You are happy, there is the sun, you take a bike to work, uh, you are, it's a sunny day, you, there is no problem, you go inside, you take a coffee, and you start your PC, there is a one mail from your boss. We have to buy a new plant, we have to make it. No problem, I can take care tomorrow. Uh, well, uh, not a problem of today. But after a little time, I know that you are a process engineer, a system engineer, a system integrator. You have done it like that. You comes and your boss opens the door, say, I forget one thing, the plant is for tomorrow. And he closes the door again like that. And it starts raining. The coffee breaks, the coffee is bad, and your day is ruining. <laughs> Yeah, and you see the specification. Typical process, you have PID, this is a SIP, a cleaning process or sterilization in process. You say, oh my beep, I cannot say the word that I want to say. What I can do now for doing like that? Uh, maybe five years ago, I made the same project. What you do? you try and open an old project. You copy and paste and start like that. You start to copy and paste from old project or modify a little bit. But you know that you have to make some, you have to go faster. It's easy to make mistake, to forget something, to put the bad part. We are talking also about automation, process automation here. It's not only the SCADA, it's also the PLC part. It's long, it's a tedious activity because maybe you see the reference, there is 250 valve, you have to check each signal and everything. You have to connect and copy past. And if it was life science, there is a lot of time because you have to validate it, you have to test it. There is a lot of functionality that you want to put inside. Simulation, operation mode, uh, audit trail, alarm, interlock, everything, and you forget something. Clearly, is a PID you want to connect to is a, is a 88 batch control. It's not easy. You forget how to do it because there is no documentation. The people, the engineering that have done the previous project haven't done any comment because comment is take time, and you have you don't know how to do it. And you think maybe there is an easy way to do it. It is. is a common task, and you see why I can call Copa Data for doing like that. And uh, so far, so good. So what? What we are doing now? We are thinking about a new system. So we have created for each 
of the components that are used in an IPD, digital sensor, analogic sensor, a valve, a motor, a PID, two library. One is based on the smart object symbol of Xenon, and the other part is a library that go in the PLC. The two parts work together, and what are we are doing? We want to break the copy and paste that we do in the future and do the easiest way of Xenon. That is, we need to instantiate and parameterize object. Sorry, but I'm Italian. There is some word that I cannot pronounce, like science, <laughs> parameterize. Uh, yeah, they give me all the other stuff in Emilia Romagna, but not some word is possible for me. <laughs> now, I, we want to introduce you to two demo. The one is uh, with Xenon Logic and Xenon SHMI and the SCADA. But we want to go to the darker side, and we want to introduce one with a Siemens TIA portal. Clearly, it is impossible to install Siemens TIA portal in a PC, so we make a video. Okay. Sorry for we are a little bit faster. Now we start with the first is a live demo uh, with logic. Please switch. No, the demo. Okay. Now we with TIA portal. We are creating uh, the motor. We are creating the motor. If I show, no, okay. Now we come back to there. Okay, <laughs> video is after. This is live. We have a plant that are working. You see that you can open the valve. You can put in automatic mode, in manual mode. You can set uh, the alarm if it was present or not. Uh, you can enable or not the interlock. Is everything is working. Now we want to put a modification in this layout uh, and to put a new stuff. What we do, we can do faster to this engineering studio. You have to open one time a day, you have to open. And we open logic because we see that we have the PLC part. The PLC part is here. We want to put a new object. I want a valve. I can put here and I connect the input. My sensor for the opening, my sensor for the closing, setting point, my interlock, my process state, and the data. The data is communicating with Xenon. I don't have it now, but I want a valve. So I copy and paste only a valve. I give it a name, the return, and I can drag and drop my valve here. I download it. My PLC part is finished. I don't have to do anything. Yes, I have to do the automation, but this is uh, uh, afterwards. Now I can switch to Xenon and uh, Okay, open this column. We see that we are, the new valve is created. We want to activate, this is for the logic technology, but the good part that now I want to create the object. I go to the smart object, I create a new instance, and I can select which object I want on my PID. I want a valve, I give it a name, and I check, I don't forget the documentation, but I can read here all the documentation, and I start to create the object. Now, we need only to wait a little time so you can take a coffee. Now we are a little more happier, because uh, until now you have, done, you have done everything automatically. And uh, depend a little bit how fast it was your computer, it was created. Now we check after what we can do with this one. Okay, we have to finish. Okay, what we do here, for example, we put the parameter, we put the name, okay, is that everything that is connected. Now we need to connect the variable to the smart object, the PLC. For now, we have two different ways. We create a wizard because it do automatically create the alarm, text in the alarm and everything. 
It's not a problem. This is correct. The wizard is ended. Now that I've done everything that I need to put on lay layout, I can go. I have my previous layout. I go to the smart object, take the new valve, put on the page, recompile. When the compile is finished, I refresh. And the new valve is here, working with automation, manual mode, interlock everything. And you have finished your job for this. And you are to be sure the library is tested and validated. This is the result that you can do with this one. Now, if we start the video, please. OK. We see that we can do the same stuff, is the same technology with Tia Portal. We had a function block, we had OB1 to communication, we instantiate a new object of the motor, this time is a motor. We need to connect the variable in a global DB. We put the library of the data type, is a structure of the type of the motor. And I flag that I need to be retained. I compile. OK. I go to the main. I need to talk with Xenon. So in the data, I need only to set which type of uh, communication I want. And I can download to the PLC. The PLC part is finished. OK. Now. We comes back to the PID, it's the same PID, here the color is a little better, that we see that we have, uh, we can import all the variables from the driver, so you don't have to manually create the uh, variable. Okay, it's a little bigger. You select which variable you want to import, you put the filter only in the new motor that you want to connect, Select all the variable and import. Now you have all the variable that you need from the PLC is already inside your Xenon project. There is no problem, there is no mistake in working, the name is correct, the comment, the identification. And I can see that the variable is here and is present. I go to the smart object, I create an instance, it's a motor, I give the name. I check the documentation if I forget something, and uh, we create a little bit. Now we see a different time of checking. We do with a smart object rules that we connect automatically only one uh, some rules, all the variable to the smart object that is connected. You see that all the variable of the smart object is connected to the variable of the PLC automatically. There is no mistake. You cannot make an error because it's all automatically. So it becomes tested and validated. You put the name, and you have finished. Clearly, you need to, to put on the screen. I made a mistake, same mistake two times. Now you recompile everything. You go to your PID layout. You can go to the smart object and you drag and drop your object on the PID, and everything is finished. You recompile. You refresh the runtime. You never stop the runtime. And you have a new motor that is up and running. To be sure that I, we want to show you that uh, it's not a simulation, it's a real uh, object, we go online on the PLC, and we can see that uh, the communication data for the motor, the status of the object, the set point, and everything, it changes. So we are really in connection with the object like this. This, to close this one, is to show that we can have 
uh, easiest way to create PID and to connect everything also in a validated environment. So my presentation is finished. Thank you for your time for listening to me. I want to introduce you now, Sebastian Bos for back off. Please come back to the stage. Thank you. Okay, um, first of all, thank you very much for having me today here at this great event. Um, so I want to talk about the integration of DEXP into the MTP um, standard or into the MTP engineering. Um, I will quickly go over, to my, agen over my agenda today, um, a quick introduction of what the problem is or why we need this DEXP standard and how to integrate that into the MTP file. And then we see some um, ideas of how we do that for our, for our uh, software part um, and evaluate the whole import con concept. <clears throat> so problem, what is the problem and how do we, uh, or why do we need the DEXP standard? The goal is always to have an end-to-end -end engineering. So that means from the beginning of the process, we design or we physically design the um, process, the module from scratch, and build up in PNID. The next step would be to automate this, this module with the MTP and then connect it to the Xenon uh, uh, poll, for example, and uh, control it. So the f um, to start off, I want to uh, quickly go over to the uh, MTP standard again to uh, really um, tell you why we need this, this standard to uh, um, get to these benefits of MTP. So we want to sh have a short time, of, uh, time to market, we want to have a quick time to repair, and we want to um, build modules to realize the um, vision of batch size one. So MTP concept is about having different modules in different layouts and exchanging modules if an error occurs, with an, replace it with the same module or replace it with another module. And we always want to rearrange everything. And the basic concept is to do that really fast, to be really fast to the market and have this short time to market and to have this short time to repair. And the idea is to have an MTP for all of these modules. But now, if we switch over to the engineering, we, um, always, or we already defined the MTP as a standard interface between the module engineering and the process orchestration layer. So we have this MTP file there as a yeah, connection between both of these engineering tools or engineering environments. But what comes before the module engineering? Because we already have the PNID of the module, the physical module, and we want to integrate that into our module engineering to not um, like copy and paste everything again and do the whole module engineering from scratch again. So we need a standard at exactly this point. Now let's have a look a, a, dip, a bit uh, deeper into the workflow there. So we got this PNID, we want to export this as a file, and then map it onto the MTP standard, to the MTP file. Um, but we are, right now, we don't have a standard for that. But um, the idea is to use DEXP as a standard, map it onto MTP, then convert it in our application in, in Twinket automation software, um, and then generate your code for your module and program it, and then yeah, load it up into the poll from uh, Copper Data into Xenon. So why DEXP? Um, first of all, DEXP has a lot of members. Um, we have a few um, like organizations and supporters of this DEXP standard who standardize this, this um, concept. And of course, we have a lot of end users um, who are also interested in this, in this um, idea or in this concept. Uh, um, on top of that, DEXP has a um, uh, defined semantics and a defined format. It's an XML um, file which is uh, freely available. That's another great benefit. So everybody can use it and it has a defined XML scheme. Um, talking about the access, it's freely available. They have an own website for DEXP.org um, and you can find some uh, e examples and um, yeah, products in the GitLab online. Um, next step, if we um, yeah, Im imagine the workflow which I just shown you, um, we are at the mapping, the mapping point. So the mapping from the DEXP onto the MTP. So in the DEXP, you define like nozzles, define like um, sinks and so on, or motors, whatever you have, 
And then we want to map it onto the MTP standard where we also have things, we have um, visual objects, whatever. And we need to do, find a way um, of how to map that and how to standardize this mapping. So we did something, um, this is co like a conversion or mapping um, table, where you can see that we map everything we have in the DexP class, like in drawing, like in equipment nozzle, onto the MTP class, like a picture of visual objects. And with that, we can do this mapping st um, step inside of our workflow for the MTP um, engineering or the module engineering. So what comes next? We map all of this together, um, put it into our automation software for the, on the module side or on the PEA side, um, and then automate this module and define services and so on, whatever we do in the, mod, uh, in the MTP. But of course, we want to check if this import or this mapping of the DEXP onto the MTP worked as we want to, um, because it's an open standard or not a standardized mapping at this point. And for that, we decided to do a uh, valida validation image. That means we have a really easy um, representation of the PNID as in yeah, small h and i to just compare it and to see if all the objects are um, converted and mapped right. And for that, we have a few really easy um, images and um, parts for our, for our uh, validation image to just re really have an easy look at all the, all the equipment, all the parts, if that fits and it's on the right point in the HMI and on the, on the right point um, of the module, of course. So I brought you some examples. First of all, we have this, um, yeah, it's a steerer, it's a tank with some, with some pipes, with some wells, with some motors and, um, uh, pumps, and this is the PNID. And the next step, like I said, we map this PNID, which with the DEXP standard, onto the MTP classes, and then we validate this with a validation image inside of our automation software. And then it looks like that. Um, but of course, this is not the HMI at the end. This is just, an, like I said, a really easy uh, validation image of how the module looked like afterwards in the MTP, in the uh, module engineering environment um, in Twinket on our automation software. Um, the next step would be to generate an HMI and to ed edit this HMI because, as you can see, we have a few uh, valves and pumps which are really small and not applicable for touching or something else because they're really just too small and you don't even see some of them. So what we do next? is to um, optimize that for the HMI use and uh, yeah, just make some of them bigger, uh, put it into the right place so the controller afterwards can touch everything and control the whole process. And of course, at the end, after module engineering, it comes into the pole with the, with the MTP um, file and then it looks like this in Xenon. Um, so as you can see, all the modules are then bigger, better for touching and so on. So the um, MTP or the HMI part of the MTP is uh, adapted and um, optimized for the HMI use afterwards. I have another example because I want to show you, again, we have the PNID, and I want to show you some problems that can occur if you map the DEXP standard onto the MTP. As you can see on the bottom here, we have a few parts of equi or equipment where the nozzles and the sinks are not directly connected, so the ports are just wrongly connected, or we have some lines over there on the top right corner which aren't connected um, to the right equipment. And for that, exactly that case is the validation image that, we, that I just presented. So in the next step, we can adapt a few things, did an, do an, a new uh, validation image, as, and as we can see, now all the ports are connected to the right equipment and we have no lines or no pumps or um, instrumentations that aren't connected to anything and just yeah stand there in the in the uh, alone every uh, somewhere. Um, again, now we do an HMI out of that. Um, create the HMI based on this um, validation image and based on the adapted information we have in our MTP file, and then send it upwards into the um, Xenon pole. Of course, what I just uh, skipped is we can do some some uh, adaptions again to just um, yeah, make it perfect for the um, touch use afterwards or to easily control it. And this is how it looks like in Xenon then at the end to control the whole plant, the whole park of different um, modules. 
Okay, um, to sum it up, because of time, <laughs> um, a short conclusion. First, on the congruence of DEXP and MTP. DEXP is way bigger or has a bigger database than MTP, so we need to find a way of how to map all the, all the information from the DEXP onto MTP without losing anything and without, um, yeah, without having too much information into the MTP. So we want to abstract the DEXP onto the MTP and make it more compact. Um, another thing is that we have a benefit out of DEXP because we have this at the, at the start, I said end-to-end -end engineering, and now we can do it with the PNID at the start from scratch with just a physical module, then uh, automate this module with services and so on, and creating an MTP-ready module, and then integrate this MTP module uh, with the MTP file into the poll, um, and yeah, create your whole park of modules, connected every connect everything together, um, and yeah. The effort to, to build up this MTP file, to build up this MTP-ready module, is uh, way less than before because we can integrate the existing PNID and do not need to put everything with copy and paste again and again. And at the last point, um, as an, yeah, like an evaluation of how it works, um, we need to have, like I already said, strict modeling rules of how to connect DEXP onto MTP maybe doing standard, maybe doing recommendation of how to map that so that every vendor and every um, system integrator and user has the same idea of mapping both of these standards and not that every vendor does, does its own mapping standard and uh, yeah, so all the modules look, dif look different. And of course, uh, on our side as a PEA, module engineering um, vendor, of course we need to build up our program, our software that is yeah, that it's um, robust against all these different um, types, all these different objects defined in the DEXP, but that's on our side and that's not on your side, then if you use these modules. Um, yeah, that's all from my side. I hope that fits on the time. Um, thank you very much, and now I give over to Giuseppe for the last part with the integration of MTP into the existing DCS system. Thank you, Sebastian. Very nice to see that uh, how Backoff is uh, supporting MTP also from their side. So different players working together for the, in this direction. And now is uh, time to try to conceptualize what we, what we saw today. And uh, since we are among engineers used to talk about technology, software, and uh, artificial intelligence, uh, stuff like that, let me start with uh, something different. Yeah. Why this picture is so important in the history of art? This is a real Raphael paint, a, a picture of a real Raphael painting. This is not AI, okay? <laughs> this picture is important because uh, um, during that time, Raphael started studying the central perspective in painting. And this is considered, in the history of art, the first painting introducing the third dimension. So comparing to other paintings, like in Giotto, in Cimabue, that they are basically two dimensions, in Raphael we have, for the first time, the third dimension. You can imagine it was a revolution in the history of art. So what we have seen today Today, we saw a sort of revolution in process automation. We saw another dimension. We saw modularity, plug and produce, thanks to an open standard. Modular type package. What are the main difference between classical DCS applications and modular type package? The most important, Decentralized intelligence. Typically in DCS, you have uh, the process control system that own the intelligence and uh, all the process control uh, routines and algorithms are inside of it. And the peripheral is typically without any intelligence. Using the MTP, we distribute the intelligence from the center to the peripheral. 
So we have a clear separation between module engineering and process orchestration. So the PC on top, the control system on top, is an orchestrator like in symphonic orchestra. He relies on the capability of the module, simply say, please, do this job, and then start the other, and then start the other again, following a recipe, as you saw before by, by Herbert. But then, thanks to this idea of uh, distributing the intelligence and having a, a standard interface, you can really apply plug and produce, because you speak a common language. And it is a vendor-independent architecture, an open architecture. But we see here an important uh, component. We see the MTP gateway. We saw the MTP gateway in action today, integrating uh, this uh, Saitiva module. And we realize the importance of the component today, because uh, today is not easy to find the MTP-related devices, we know. But this is why, thanks to this module, you can speak the language of, uh, of, the, of the existing uh, um, equipment, and you map the signal in the OPC UA compliant way. But let me again um, push the attention to the MTP file. The MTP file is like uh, your biometric passport. When you go in the airport and you have this automatic machine that reads your passport, you put your passport in the machine and then the machine recognizes you and then you can it open the gate or not according to your characteristic, let me say. <laughs> and, uh, but at the end of the day, all uh, is represented in this, uh, in this, uh, in this passport. The, the MTP file is something like that. Is, uh, all the services the model is capable to provide are described here, the HMI, as you saw before, and it is automatically read by the process orchestration layer. So, this is, uh, and this is done by MTP Studio. So the combination of MTP Studio in Xenon and the MTP Gateway offer you this, um, this integration. After that, we, we saw from Alessandro how you can create open process automation application, including ESA 88 batch control, using Xenon as a process control system and uh, a Siemens PLC as a PLC. And we saw how easy it is to have uh, a library of standard models, like in this case, a sensor, a valve, and many others, as we saw, and, and about 20 different components you have that are composed by a visual part that is uh, running on Xenon and uh, a logic part. And the logic part runs on the Siemens PLC. And this configuration is ready to be used in combination with an ESA 88 batch control. But let me come back to Florence. In the same time, an artist like Sandro Botticelli, of course, applied the third dimension in painting and tried to combine it uh, with the harmony in the composition and uh, the pursuit of uh, perfection in painting. So how we can apply beauty, harmony, and uh, pursuit of perfection in process automation? Let me introduce you what we are uh, developing for Xenon 14, for the next versions. Let me introduce you DCS plus, Xenon DCS+. Plus. So what is the idea? Can we combine the modular automation, as we saw before, with the classical automation together? So using uh, simple components like valve, motor, and so on, as we saw from Alessandro, in a single orchestration environment. Let's try to have a look. So first, we need, of course, a process library. A process library that is, uh, again, composed by the, the classical process components, composed by two parts, the visualization part, the classical faceplate, and the control part. In this case, the logic, the control part, is instantiated in a Xenon Logic controller. The Xenon Logic controller, as you know, Xenon Logic is a platform independent PLC. Can run on Windows, can run on Linux, can run also on other operating systems. And then, of course, 
the logic controller is connected to a field bus I.O., Profinet I.O., Modbus, or other I.O.s. Very important, especially in life science, this process library is developed, maintained, documented, and validated by Copa Data. So you, in your project, you can leverage the pre-validation of the library um, because we will do this, this work for you. So this is from the, the first component, the process library. What about now this engineering environment? So let's imagine to have, uh, as you can see here uh, on the bottom side, the models. You have, for example, a reactor, and then maybe you have some buffers. One reactor is an MTP compliant, uh, an MTP ready equipment, and, but the other is uh, compliant using a gateway, for example. And then you have uh, your library of uh, classical uh, DCS components, and you want to combine it together in a single environment. So, I want to use one reactor and three instances of, of buffers, so three buffers and one reactor. But now I need to connect the outcome <coughs> of the reactor to the three buffers. So I need the piping for this, but now I need to decide where I want to transfer the fluid, in the first, in the second, or in the third reactor. So I need three valves. So one valve for controlling the first, the second, and the third reactor. So I use exactly for my library the symbols I have in my valve. What is the difference between uh, these MTP-ready devices and that? We have the intelligence here. So they are, I simply need to ask services to this. The valve need to, the logic controlling the valve must be downloaded in some, in some PLC. This is done exactly when you, or, sorry, when we, you orchestrate, uh, the, create the application uh, in Xenon. So you will have the connectivity with the process orchestration equip, with the, sorry, from to the PEA. You will deploy the code of the, of the valve directly in the PLC, and you create the HMI, the faceplate, the ISA 88 batch engine, alarm, audit trail, and classical application, as we saw before from, uh, from Herbert demonstration. And this is from the engineering point of view. So you're using this idea, we think that we simplify the life of the engineers, and we speed up the application, the, the creation of the process automation application using an open platform. So, from the engineering point of view, this is clear. What about the hardware point of view? So, of course, uh, we need the openness, we need flexibility. But we are in process automation, so we need reliability and resilience. So, we cannot uh, expect a problem, and we need to react in case of fault, of course. So let's try to shape together um, an example of uh, architecture we can have uh, with Xenon in configuration of DCS+. Plus. So let's start with the basic component, so the engineering studio and uh, a, cap a redundant uh, Xenon server running in the center, orchestrating the, um, the, the, equip the complete uh, equipment. And then let's connect two MTP-compliant uh, um, skids, for example. And in this case, the Xenon acts as a process orchestration layer connecting with the, the, the classical MTP component. But now we need to download the logic for the classical solution components like valve, motor, and so on to um, an, a Xenon logic controller. So, I offer here an example of a possible configuration you can have with Xenon logic. So on our left, we see one simple configuration where we have one Xenon logic controller uh, connect to a Modbus I.O. It's a very simple configuration. On this, in the center, we see a redundant configuration of Xenon logic connect to Profinet I.O. devices. In this case, we are talking about Siemens, Profinet I.O. devices, 
using Profinet S2 redundancy, meaning that in case of fault of one controller, the system still working, still running, because of this Profinet S2 redundancy. So we cover one fail in, in case of, in case of um, problem in one, in one controller. But maybe you want to be safe even in case of a problem on the hardware point of view. So let's imagine that we can apply also the so-called MRP redundancy, so media redundancy protocol, so a sort of ring on the Profinet I.O., where you can also uh, react to another fail on the, Ethernet, on, the, on the communication cable. So in this case, the Xeno redundancy, Profinet redundancy, MRP on the Profinet I.O., provide you a very safe, a very reliable, a very resilient uh, architecture for classical process automation uh, configuration. And we tested already Xenon in dif um, different um, hardware uh, components. For example, you can see there Siemens IoT 2050. You see there Phoenix Contact, another, another product for Phoenix. But we are, we are testing different uh, devices of course, you can select a device you prefer according to your configuration, according to the power you need in your, in your application. So this is exactly an open, an open solution. And of course, you can, you can use uh, uh, the classical function of Xenon we have. For example, the Xenon Historian, we will see something about that today. Uh, the Xenon Report Engine, we have the classical Xenon Client we can, we can offer. And of course, the integration with the IT uh, system, IT services, you can have MES, like Verum, PASX, SAP, and many other, and many other uh, systems. But this is not a topic of today, of course. So this is from, from the hardware uh, point of view. But uh, let me come back to Florence. Uh, during that historical period, uh, a special alchemy, alchemy was combined uh, in Florence. Because uh, artists from a unique talent were trained and created uh, masterpieces that uh, today we can see in the most important gallery worldwide. But those masterpieces, would never have been created without the encouragement and the support of a patron like uh, Lorenzo de' Medici. Lorenzo il Magnifico, the Magnificent. Behind every innovation, there is uh, an early adopter who understands the benefit, understands the advantages, and think out of the box. Think uh, out of the comfort zone, applying new schema, new partners. partners. Let me say that uh, I saw today Dr. Bamber, like Lorenzo de' Medici in Florence in that time, applying this new concept, uh, this revolution in process automation. But uh, I saw here today many other companies working in this area, but also in the audience, there are other innovative companies that are dealing with modularity and, and topic uh, like this. So today, now is our turn. Let's innovate process industry together. Thank you. <laughs>